Let us try to clear the concept of electric field. Almost all of us know about gravitational field and magnetic field. We all experienced that when an iron piece is placed nearby a magnet, it will be attracted by the magnet. As you know, this is nothing but the influence of magnetic field surrounds the magnet. We also experience gravitational force constantly. Although, we do not bother about gravitational force, as it is always with us. But gravitational force we always feel, is due to the gravitational field, around the earth. An electric field behaves in same manner as gravitational, or magnetic field. There is always a force, acting on a charged body it is brought nearer to another charged body. This force acts on the bodies in a definite direction. The space around a charged body, within which, this force is experienced by another charged body, is known as electric field of the first body. To understand the concept more clearly, let us go through this experiment. Here we consider two oppositely charged sphere. One sphere is positively charged with Q1 coulomb. Another sphere is negatively charged with Q2. Now, consider a small positively charged particle is placed on the surface here. As this sphere is also charged with positive charge Q1, it will repeal the positive particle. At the same time as other sphere is negatively charged, it will attract the positive particle. Initially, the force of repulsion from Q1 will be much stronger than the force of attraction from Q2. Because, at this position, the distance of positive particle from Q1 is much smaller than distance from Q2. Both, repulsion and attraction forces act on the positive particle at erected perpendicular to the charged surface of Q1 and Q2 respectively. Due to these two forces, there will be a resultant force acting on that particle. If this particle is free to move, it will start to move in the direction of the resultant force. Due to this resultant force, the particle will come to a new position, at next instant. When this particle comes to a new position, force F1 will be decreased, and force F2 will be increased. Again, when this particle comes to another new position, the force F1 and F2 are again changed. Hence, the direction of the resultant force will also be changed. This is a continuous process and the particle will trace a curved path starting from positive Q1 sphere and ending at negative Q2 sphere. If you place the positive particle on different points at the surface of Q1, numbers such curve path can be traced out. The lines shown, represent the possible paths taken by the positively charged particle in response to the force acting on it. Thus, they are called the lines of electric force. They may also be referred to as the lines of electric flux. The total electric flux makes up the whole electric field existing between and around the two charged bodies. The lines themselves are imaginary, and the field is three-dimensional. The whole of the space surrounding the charged bodies is occupied by the electric flux, so there are no gaps in which a charged particle would not be affected. The lines of force or flux radiate outwards from the surface of a positive charge and terminate at the surface of a negative charge. The lines always leave or terminate at right angles to a charged surface. Although, the lines drawn on a diagram do not actually exist as such, they are a very convenient way to represent the existence of the electric field. They therefore, aid the understanding of its properties and effects. Since, Force is a vector quantity any line representing it must be arrowed. The convention used here is that the arrows point from the positive to the negative charge. Thank you, keep serving electrical for you.com.